Hey, rock stars, I'm JB, expert salesperson and master presenter. I'm the doctor, psychologist, and behavioral expert. This is the Entrepreneur Mastery Lab Podcast. We're high performance coaches that help service based professionals and entrepreneurs take their skills to the next level. 70% of entrepreneurs fail, which is why every week we have real talk with real entrepreneurs to help ensure you are not one of them. We're also the inventors of the Be Rich Mindset, where we rise to mastery, inspire greatness, celebrate knowledge, and help others along the way. So join us in the lab. And now, on to the show. Welcome back to the lab. I'm JB. I'm the doctor. Hey, for all our returning listeners and viewers, it is fantastic to chat with you and see you again. Uh, if you've already done it, which I know you have, I'm sure you have. You must have by now, right? You've given us that five-star review. You have liked, you have followed, you subscribed, you shared with family, your friends, the people you don't like even. Uh, I hope. Thank you ahead of time. We appreciate you. And if you are a new listener, thank you so much for joining us. As always, we do Real Talk with Real Professionals here in the Entrepreneur Mastery Lab. If you like what you hear, if you like what you see, if you feel good and you got something good out of this, give us a like, a follow, a subscribe. Give us that five-star review at the end. We need your help. We really do. We're here to impact and influence more people than ever before. Uh, the more they hear from you about how great our guests are and the conversations we have are, the more people will reach, and we are forever grateful and appreciative. And if you don't like us, <clears throat> just tell your friends that they should listen to us so they can get their opinion. Then you guys can have a conversation about those opinions and see which one's right. Isn't that nice? We can be polarizing. Let's call that polarizing, right, Doc? We can be polarizing. You know, you know when I'm polarizing? When I have, like, no sleep, which I'm kind of in the middle of right now um with the with the baby right around the corner it's like you know they, they don't tell you that when you have a kid um you you lose sleep before the kid actually comes but it's true yeah the, the sleep loss starts early well it just wants to practice get that practice in right you know, get that repetition it's it. consistency it. it's key we talk about that all the time <laughs> who needs sleep it's no big deal I need yeah sleep. i mean sleep is so important we do know that and the idea of getting ready for the you got to get that mindset ready that you know you're going to be working on less sleep i have to get the mindset ready that you're going to be working on less sleep because i know you're going to be extra cranky that's right so you better get me some coffee when you see me even if you don't drink doc that's uh that's that's how you're going to keep me supported here that's Just my job is, is the the prep of less cranky jb right but you know what I'm never cranky about when we have an awesome guest to chat with and we have a guest with some fantastic energy. So I'm super excited to introduce Steph Weber of Weber & Co, who is a brand and marketing strategist and absolutely phenomenal at what she does. Steph, thank you for joining us in the lab. Thank you guys so much for having me. I, I'm excited to be here and I can relate to the whole no sleep thing. I have a almost one and a half year old at this point. And um, I get that life. So here we are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you look better at lack of sleep than I do. I promise. <laughs> I promise you that. <laughs> Did, team no sleep. Right. Team no sleep. Right. No doc, sleep. doc, you can, you can, you can do a sit in with us, right? You're welcome to not sleep. Well, <laughs> uh, I enjoy my, my solid eight hours every night. I don't have to worry about that. I bet, I bet you do. Uh, I, I only hate you a little bit right now. Just just a smidge. Yeah. Try not to rub it in, but woohoo. Oh, yeah, it sounds like that, right? You're not rubbing it in at all, of course, yeah. <laughs> Steph, uh, for our listeners, for our viewers, um, do us a favor, please. Just share a little bit more about yourself and your business um, so they have a better sense of who you are and what makes you so special. Yes, absolutely. Well, I'm excited to be here today. My name is Steph Weber. I am the CEO of The Weber Co. And we are a branding and marketing company that is truly dedicated to helping entrepreneurs and small businesses build an authority brand and prioritize human connection within their marketing efforts. The reason that we exist really is to help you be able to make an impact both in your life and the lives of those that you serve. Um, and we always put human connection at the forefront of that. So that's a little bit about The Weber Co. as a whole. You know, my absolute favorite thing about having uh, somebody who focuses in on on branding and marketing on the show uh, is this is no secret to the doc, at least. But 
when I ask somebody to say, Hey, who are you? What you do? It's always like this crystal clear, perfect message. I'm just like, Oh, I love it. <laughs> and it kind of, well, I mean, if it's not, it's maybe concerning, but uh -huh. know, I, I really do enjoy it. How'd you end up running this business? You've been running this business for, you've, you've got eight plus years of experience doing this, right? So, so how'd you get into it? What, what kind of brought you to where you are today? Yeah, so I have a background in PR and advertising, but even before that time, um, my family had a small business. Unfortunately, that small business did not survive. And in 2010, um, I was going into my senior year of high school and my parents said, we don't have funds to send you to college. You're going to have to figure it out. And I took a job at a local boutique at that time. Um, and I became their brand manager and then their general manager as my career went on. Um, and being in the fashion industry, fashion influencers kind of came to the forefront of the social media space. Um, I want to say this happened around 2015, 2016. It had been happening long before that time, uh, but this is really when we saw an explosion in the influencer marketing sphere, um, and I joined that sphere. So I said, people are talking about what they're wearing, about the makeup that they're putting on their face, about where they're traveling. I can do all of those things too, and kind of wanted to use it as a creative outlet. You know, I was a brand manager. I was doing marketing strategy for these small local boutiques um, and said, I can do this very easily for, for my own brand um, as a fashion, beauty, and travel influencer. So I started my business under the name Trendy in Indy, um, being that I'm based in the Indianapolis area. And I thought that, that was a fun play on words. So um, the brand really became about supporting the small local businesses that make the Indianapolis community all that it is. Now, I was traveling to New York City. I had some hotel collaborations over in Europe as well. And I, those partnerships were awesome, but I really Really wanted to focus on the indie community um, and be able to speak to all that this awesome city has to offer, um, especially from a small local business perspective. So that's kind of where the brand started. But as I was doing that work as an influencer, I was very quickly realizing that for many of these businesses, there was a big disconnect between their brand and the marketing strategy that they were executing. And they didn't have that solid brand foundation that was allowing them to really maximize the marketing efforts that they were making. So, you know, it's easy to throw money at ads or an influencer to try to expand your business, but they're speaking to your brand. And if your brand is not clear, that's difficult for them to do. So I was going in and saying, tell me about your story. Why are people shopping from your boutique versus the boutique down the street? Or why should I come to your restaurant versus the one that's located downtown, why this location specifically? So really trying to dig into um, the deeper meaning, the deeper connection as the brand piece in order to support the marketing efforts. And then the Weber Co. became the Weber Co. I skipped a couple of years in there, but we moved to Phoenix for a job opportunity for me. And so it's been a journey to get to full-time entrepreneurship um, and being the CEO of this company that is now growing a team. And I'm sure that many entrepreneurs can relate to the ups and downs of what that journey looks like. But here we are today as the Weber Co. And very thankful for the work that we get to do with the entrepreneurs that choose to link arms with us. That's awesome. I And, and I love it, right? It's never linear. Right? It's, it's never that straight line. If, if anything, it's all over the place and you know, you backwards, forwards, upside down. You feel like you're in a roller coaster or something doing spins. You, you don't know what's left to right half the time. Uh, totally appreciate that. I think most of our listeners and viewers do as well. I'm, I'm curious, do you still do the influence side of things? Are you still in that world or have you stepped away from that as you've kind of gotten more involved with Weber, Weber Co? I, what's yeah. That's a good question, JB. To be honest with you, I really, I really pretty much stepped away from that world. Now, where I do still have my hands in it is when I have um, a business that comes to me and says, hey, I want to put together an influencer marketing strategy. What does it look like for our business to be able to use that as a piece of our marketing strategy? So I still have my hands in terms of the strategy side of things. I'm just not so much, um, you know, getting collaboration requests and saying, hey, will you post about our business and we'll send you a thousand dollars and here you go. I don't, I don't really do that work anymore um, simply because it's time consuming. And I, my, my husband, love him. He was my photographer as an influencer and we really enjoy our weekends, not um, shooting content for anyone and everyone. So uh, it's really become more about how can we support our clients and the small businesses that, that work with us. It's the unsung hero right there of the business, right? It's, you always wonder, it's like, who's the person behind the camera doing all this work? Because I, I used to wonder about that. <laughs> so I appreciate your husband. He's doing, he, he did a lot of work with that. Uh, I, 
I have a question, Steph, that may, maybe a few of our listeners have. You know, is, is there an appropriate time in your mind that somebody should be looking to utilize an influ influencer strategy versus other types of marketing? I mean, I'm just kind of, is, is there a, a turning point or a hinging point, an inflection point where it's like, hey, this makes a ton of sense to start implementing? Yeah, I, yes, there absolutely is. And I think one of those differentiating factors is deciding how much you want to actually invest in your marketing. You know, there's a lot of great, I'm going to put air quotes around free marketing because we all know that Instagram really isn't free. So many of you are probably paying someone to do your Instagram or you're paying someone for strategy or you're paying to try to figure out how to do it yourself. So it's free in terms of you can get on and post a photo, but the strategy behind it. Hopefully you didn't go to Google University for. Hopefully you have somebody who's actually helping you and guiding you. Uh, but influencer marketing is absolutely something that you need to be ready and willing to put dollars towards. As an influencer back, back in the day, um, I was always really offended when a business would reach out and say, hey, can I send you this $20 product? for six posts and 17 stories. And I was like, absolutely not. Do you know how much A time that's gonna take me and B the exposure that you're gaining? So, you know, when it comes to influencer partnerships, there's a, there's a lot that goes into that. It has to be mutually beneficial on both sides. And as a brand, you have to really understand your goals. You can use influencer marketing to build awareness. You can use influencer marketing to promote a launch. You can use influencer marketing to promote a new product, whatever that may be for you. But you have to decide what those outcomes and those goals are and be willing and ready to put the dollars behind it. So if you're in a stage of business where you have a larger marketing budget and you want to test using influencers, that's a great time for you to have an influencer marketing strategy. Um, if you are somebody who is still maybe grassroots or bootstrapping your business a little bit, I mean, how many of us are not trying to do that? Because I'm still trying to do that. And we've reached this really, like, really cool level of business. And we're trying to scale to seven figures in the next couple of years. But I'm still like, okay, where can we make sure that we're really maximizing our efforts, right? Um, so it's important for you to just be aware of that, be conscious of it. Um, and if you are trying to do more of that bootstrapping piece, um, maybe an affiliate or a referral program might make more sense for you than an influencer marketing side of things. And that's where you look at your current clients, your current customers and say, okay, how can we allow them to be our affiliates or be our referrals? In other words, bring new business into us and reward them for doing so. So lots of different efforts in terms of what you could do in that regard. And thank you, by the way, for kind of walking through what the affiliate and the referral business model is, because a lot of our listeners or viewers might not know, know about that, but it, it is a highly effective model. And I will say, I, coming from a financial services world with a lot of heavy compliance background and, and regulatory, a heavy regulatory influence, uh, the, that idea, that concept really didn't exist. <laughs> Your referral marketing, affiliate marketing uh, was not a thing you could embrace that you, you step into the coaching and the consulting world and the small business world and it opens up you know almost pandora's box of what you can do right because it, it's not it doesn't carry that same level of government regulation where they're really stepping in and saying hey what you can or cannot do uh it's it's a very nice thing to see and it can be very effective so it sounds like what i heard from you step is hey the influencer model can be really effective if you've got the cash to put into it but if you're not there yet rather than have one reaching out to many, have many reach out to many. And that's a much yeah. more effective platform because then you're not really, you're not paying them until business comes to you, right? It's a difference of, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm paying you at the point of business closing. I don't have to come out of pocket ahead of time. Yep, exactly. Yep, you're exactly right, JB. And that that really is the difference for many businesses. I'm, I mean, so many businesses, are like, what can we do from a free perspective for marketing and what what's paid? Uh, and that's what you have to evaluate. Yeah, it makes a ton of sense. So working with businesses in Indianapolis, it, it, interesting, especially coming from your background, because I imagine there's a, there's a lot of businesses that are kind of more brick and mortar focused, potentially that, that you've helped out, right? And you're bringing in this totally unique perspective. Is it tough to get business owners to kind of get out of their own way sometimes with something like that? Yeah, I think no matter what space you're in, whether you're a brick and mortar business or you're in network marketing or you are a coach or a consultant, it doesn't matter. We all have various different blocks, various different challenges, um, and we, we self-sabotage and we get in our own way 
kind of on a regular basis. I even noticed where I do this. I just recently started working with a mindset coach and she's like, you are self-sabotaging. And I'm like, I know that's why I hired you. Um, but I notice it with, with a variety of different businesses and it's just varying, varying levels of what is their roadblock for brick and mortar businesses is how do we get actual foot traffic and people coming into our doors and you know it's maybe even just the block of do you believe that people want this do you believe that people need it and are you willing to do the work required to get the foot traffic in? that looks a lot different than somebody who is in the online space and has a wide variety of people maybe nationwide or maybe even worldwide that you can bring into your ecosystem right so it looks a little bit different. The challenges present maybe slightly differently, um, but the self-sabotage and the mindset blocks are there for almost every entrepreneur. We don't know anything about mindset. <laughs> Nothing. I was all. giving you the opportunity to speak up, by the way. I, I knew you had something to say there, Doc. <laughs> that is my area of expertise. Um, I'd love to talk to your coach one day. I think we can have some great uh, synergy there. Yeah, I do awesome. have a question. Um, how is the music scene in Indianapolis? The music scene? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I'm going somewhere with this, too. I saw JB's face. I'm going somewhere with okay, this. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, the music scene in Indianapolis. I, I don't know that I'm necessarily the best one to ask, but I, what I would say is that it's varied and that there's a lot of variety. I mean, you have we have where I'm located. There is a music center that's just north of us, and you have everybody from – your favorite country music stars to your favorite rap artists that come all summer long. And that space is always filled whenever there's a concert, doesn't matter what it is. What I think is cool about some of our local music stores is that they're, they're like vinyl record kind of vintage music stores. So I would say eclectic would be a word I would use. So I was thinking so. Was, <laughs> well, it was a pretty good indie scene. And I heard yeah. indie come up quite a bit. And as the branding, I'm thinking there's like just a natural way to kind of pull that all together. That was the whole thing. Yeah, you just wanted you know. to get the pun in there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> well, you went into this dribble about financial markets, and I had to wake people back up a little okay, bit. I know yeah, you're lacking like... sleep, but we don't want our audience to. Hey, I, you know what? Kuda, Kuda, that's, a, that's a pretty good one. I, I wouldn't have even occurred to me. Thank, <laughs> thank you for. Uh, Playing with me, stuff there. I appreciate the assist. Yeah. All right. Uh, I want to. I want to kind of step back to something you said early on. You see a breakdown a lot of times between branding and marketing. How does that show itself to a small business owner? What, what are some like keys that you look for um, that that our listeners or viewers can kind of keep an eye out for? So the number one thing that I hear from entrepreneurs is I want my sales to grow. Okay, we all want to increase our sales. We want to increase our awareness. We want to, we want more customers in the door. We want more clients in in our ecosystem in some capacity. That starts with your brand. Your brand is how you're perceived in the market. It's ultimately the reason that people are going to say yes to you and choose you. I mean, let's be honest. Our industries, no matter what industry you're in, it's saturated. Anyone could today decide I want to be an entrepreneur now. You've got to have an idea. You have to have some things that are, you know, happening for you. But anyone can decide and get online and they can get on social media and they can start promoting. Every industry is saturated. Your brand is the difference of you surviving for the next 10, 20 years and you not. And your brand also allows you to grow and pivot and evolve as your clients and your customers grow and evolve with you as well. So when I'm taking a look at small businesses and what they're struggling with or what they're feeling challenged by, it starts first with what is your messaging? How are you positioning yourself uniquely in the market? What is it that you're doing to bring people in that your competitors are not? And also retain those people as well, because we have to think about customer and client retention too, when we're kind of taking a look at the overall brand experience. Um, and then from a marketing perspective, the marketing is really how are you executing the brand strategy? How are you letting people know that you exist? How are you bringing, how, like, what's the how? How are you actually bringing people into your space? Um, and then the brand is really how are they connecting to you on that very real human level? Can I ask you a, a personal question? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, you brought up that your senior year of high school, your, your parents were small business owners and, and the, mm -hmm. the business fail, right? You know, and, and that, that speaks to us because you, our entire impact that we want to have is to make sure that less businesses fail. 
Um, yeah. You got into branding and marketing strategy. Was that the issue you saw in your parents' business? And and if not, what is there something there that kind of spoke to you and what you do today? Yeah, totally. So um, could that have been the issue? Possibly. I would have to do a deeper dive into that, though, to be honest with you, JB. The business that my dad owned was a tool and die business, which I know nothing about that industry. And it's very complicated. And, you know, 2008 happened and they had many businesses shut their doors on them. And it created kind of a ripple effect of problems and all of the different things. So I think that there were a multitude of reasons for that business, unfortunately, not surviving and has impacted my life indefinitely forever. Um, and it's very much a part of why I do what I do today. I have always wanted to work with small businesses. Now, when I was, my husband would tell you, who was my boyfriend at the time, he would say she did not want to be an entrepreneur. She, I distinctly remembers the conversation and I do too. And I, and I said, I never want to be an entrepreneur because I don't want to put my, my future family in the same situation that we are in now. But, you know, what I wasn't thinking about at the time was, A, I'm not my parents, B, that was their story, and C, this is my story. Um, and my business and my structure looks much different than whatever that business was. So I'm glad I didn't listen to myself at age 19, um, and I'm glad that I stepped into this journey of entrepreneurship because I'm truly paving a path for what makes sense for me and, and for my family, too. Um, so it definitely impacts what I do today in terms of my drive for wanting to help support small businesses, because like the two of you, I also want to see more small businesses thrive and survive, um, and not shut their doors after a couple of years because they can't figure out what they need to do to, to grow. So that is very much a part of my drive for the business as a whole. Yeah, and you're running a successful business. You're talking about growing to you know seven seven figures over the next couple of years. You're clearly doing a lot of things right. Yeah, I, I, it's always a good reminder out there that uh, entrepreneurship is looked at as a risk. Uh, I would mm -hmm. argue you have equal or greater risk working for a corporation where you have truly no say in control in the decisions that are going on on a daily basis around you that are going to determine your future. Uh, yeah. So there is something to be said about running your own business and. At the de-risking, yeah, it puts it on you and the stress is on you, but it allows you to to have a little bit more control over some aspects of, of your life. And uh, you can you can really mold the world around you in a lot of ways. Uh, very insightful, by the way, to recognize at an early age that, hey, just because it happened to my parents, just because I've gone through this experience does not mean it's going to happen to me, right? It does not have to be the same circumstances nor the same results. Um, that's why we talk about experimentation all the time, right, Doc? Well, as I naturally was just thinking was uh, we know, as we talk about a lot, one size doesn't fit all. So everyone has a different things that they're strong at. So it might be for some people, entrepreneurs, not their world and working in a corporate with that kind of steady uh, income and, and not having to take those risks fits their, their mindset better. Sometimes you don't know until you try and that's the beauty of life is that you can take these opportunities. You can take these cha chances because every day is an experiment. And if you're not sure you, if you want to do something, give it a shot. Worst case scenario, you just go back to doing what you already knew anyways. Uh, so no harm, no foul. And just plan for that. And you just, you know, go in with the idea that it is an experiment. It is an open, you can keep your mind open to it and take the shot and see how it goes. Um, and it's not a failure. It's a lesson. Everything that we do is just a lesson. It's data. So you take that data and then you make the next decision based off of what you just learned. So take those opportunities. Steph, in the, in the small business world, you know, with, with that focus, uh, you, you, you're in Indianapolis is, are you geographically kind of hanging in Indianapolis or is your business more of a national or global business even? What's the vision of what you want to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, well, I can say it's global because we do have clients in Canada, which is pretty cool. Um, but it's it's mostly here within the states. It's most it's mostly nationwide. Um, in terms of my vision for what this is going to become, JD, for me, we become the number one branding and marketing company that small businesses and entrepreneurs go to from a human connection standpoint from the ability to serve at the absolute highest capacity for the ability to um, take some of the things off of, we have an agency side of our business and we also have a coaching side. 
So on our agency, we're able to take your social media and you can hand it off to our team and we manage it. We operate it and we run it and we get you more clients or customers in the door through our efforts. And your time is given back to you and it's given to a team member of mine. Um, and, and so what my hope is, is that we make the lives of entrepreneurs a little bit easier. We make it easier for them to survive and we make it easier for them to thrive, not only in their business, but also in their life. You know, we're living in a really interesting time. I was just on a panel earlier this afternoon and we're living in a time where people are trying to figure out what work life I'm going to say balance, but it's not balance. There, I don't believe in true balance. I believe in work-life blend and how do these things work together. And people are really cognizant of that. And I mean, I have a husband who is starting with a new company. And this company is a, more of a startup. And this is the first time he's worked for more of a startup business, which is going to be very interesting, I think. But he told them, he said, you know, if you need somebody that can work 60 plus hours a week, I'm not your guy because I've got a wife and kids and like, my family is, is a priority for me and that's all there is to it. And they hired him anyway. And so, you know, it's all going to work out. But we're living in a world where people have importance of time, importance of where they are, importance of what it is that they're doing and how they're spending their time. And they're aware of it and they're cognizant of it. So moving from this idea of like hustle, 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 I have to do it all, all, all by myself to no, I can outsource and I can live in what I like to call your authority zone or your zone of genius. Um, and do what you want to do within your business to allow it to grow and to support you and your family and the people that you're serving. It's a very toxic mindset. I think the hustle, hustle, hustle mindset, you, you know, which is probably, you get a lot of people out there that right now are just, they just turned off the podcast or something. Cause I, I said something like that, but, and you're talking from somebody whose wife says that I'm a workaholic, so I <laughs> appreciate it for what it is, but, uh, I, I think you do need to be able to step back and and exercise some restraint from that mindset. Doc, you look like poised, like you're ready to say something, man. What's going on? Well, I have a branding expert here. I'm, this is the thing I've been running through my mind as my new idea is hustle 265 instead of the 365. <laughs> oh, interesting. And the math behind that actually works. It's the 80-20 rule, right? So working 80% of the time. And having 20% off is, you know, finding those different ways of balancing. So it allows you, you know, the one day off a week for sure. And the three weeks off for vacation. Um, and we just redefine hustle. And I like what you said about balance too, because I'm a big preacher of that. And I like the idea of balance. And I think people are misunderstood what balance is. They think 50-50. Mm -hmm. And for each person, yeah. balance is different, right? Balance could be 80-20. It could be 70-30. It could be whatever it works for you. You just have to find that number through that experimentation, find that number that works best for you. And then that's your balance. It doesn't have to be some 50, 50 idea. That's just unrealistic. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah absolutely. Hustle 265. <laughs> I love it. It's great. I, I, so, by the way, every, every parent's with you. Uh, um, like, it's not like you can't just stop one and go to the other, right? Like family life and, and work life, they, they do blend, especially today more, more than ever in the past, because so much of what we do is working from home, for example, or, you know, working remote or working part-time in office or out. Uh, so totally appreciate that. You, you brought up Steph. I'm, I'm kind of curious about this. You brought up a few times now human connection, and it's obviously very important to you in the business. Just walk me through a little bit what you mean by that specifically. Yeah. So we are living in a world right now where people are a very aware buyers, very conscious buyers, very, um, not, they're not just going to see a commercial and say, okay, yeah, I need that. They really want to know that the brands that they're choosing to do business with care about them, have their best interests at heart, are really dedicated to helping them solve whatever problem that the business is saying that they solve, right? And so for us, when we're taking a look at human connection, it is done through our three C's of marketing. So the three C's of marketing that we kind of use within our strategy as a whole are content, collaborations and conversations. And so within content, how are you giving those moments of authenticity, of vulnerability, of true storytelling in order to connect with your audience? Within collaborations, how are you exposing your audience to the various different people that you are connected with? And how are you gaining access in front of other audiences in a very real and authentic way just through asking, hey, can I be on your podcast? Hey, can we go live together? Like, let's talk to our audience about something real. And then the third one is the conversation piece. And whether that's conversations in the DMs, 
or it's conversations that you're having on a live or through chat or whatever it may be, making sure that you see the other human being and, and feel and in, are in the room with that one other person. In other words, when we're in a DM conversation, that person feels like they're the only one that matters at that moment. And our brand has their best interests at heart in terms of how we can help them within their business as a whole. I hear service, right? You know, I, like it, it, you're serving someone else. Um, you're, you're there for someone else. Uh, guide, guiding principle for us. You know, we, we talk about sales all the time and uh, it's always about stepping next to somebody and wor working alongside them and, and being that guide, right? You know, that that is how you can really become an effective salesperson. It's not about selling. It's about helping somebody gain clarity and confidence to make good decisions. It sounds like some similar value systems. It sounds like, uh, I like that. So you content collaboration and conversations mm -hmm. are any of those more important than the others or are all three equally important in your mind? They all influence one another. So your content should be leading to conversations. Your conversations might be leading to collaborations. It's how these three kind of, they're almost a circle, right? If you're mm -hmm. thinking about them visually, they're a circle of how do they all work together in order to create the sustainability, the profitability, the impact that your business needs in order to survive and thrive. Um, and so we really teach those marketing, those foundational marketing principles that are not ever going to go away and that can be used across platforms. There's always going to be a new form of Instagram or a new feature on that specific platform. So it's going, okay, how do we take these foundational principles that we know are always true for marketing? The more conversations you have, the more sales that you're going to see. The more content that you put out, the more your audience has an opportunity to connect with you and see you, be aware of you. And that awareness is needed in order to drive action, whether you're asking them to sign up for a workshop that you have coming up or you're asking them to buy whatever it is that you have to offer. They have to be aware of you before they can even take that step. So all of these pieces combine together in order to support your business as a whole. Yeah. The stool without three legs is, isn't going to stand up very long, right? You know, yeah. you need, you need all three to make it work. Absolutely. Uh, it's insightful. You, you know, it's, it's, it's all communication oriented, right? You, you've got to yeah. be effective at communication with people and, and it takes all three. Yeah. Man, you're still stuck on that, aren't you, Dre? <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't know what JB is talking about, you really need to watch us on YouTube where you get extra fun throughout the show. You do. I, I like the YouTube. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fan. Uh, so I have a total kind of, kind of off the wall question, Steph. I just, just a curious, what's your favorite platform? So you were in the influencer world. Just got, do you have a favorite? And if so, what is it? Why? I do. I have a favorite and I have a least favorite too. So I'll oh. give you, I'll give you the bonus. Um, my favorite is Instagram. I love Instagram because it offers so many different types of content and ways to start conversations that you can really engage in. So Instagram is where we hang out the most. I love being able to do reels and I don't care if I look ridiculous on reels. I think that they're fun and I can use my 17 years of dance and it's still as impactful in a reel. Um, and I think that's pretty cool. You can go live. You can do lives with others who are on the platform. Um, you can show up in stories and be very real and just show up with, you know, my, like literally my lunch is sitting right next to me. Like I could have put that on stories today or whatever. Um, you can use guides to be able to sort and organize your content. There's, there's always going to be new features on the platform, which I think is cool. Um, I don't love that, you know, there are obviously all of the algorithms that we have to battle, but when you have an awesome brand, the algorithms really don't matter. And also we can't control it. So you might as well move forward from that anyway, of that being your excuse as to why Instagram doesn't work. Um, my least favorite platform right now is TikTok. TikTok for me is a, it's a platform that I feel like I can't connect to yet. So I'm, I'm struggling with that one, but maybe I'll get there eventually. I'm struggling with the docs dance moves. So you really do, if you're listening to this, you really need to come check this out on, on YouTube. You're, <laughs> you're missing some. I feel like that's what they do on TikTok, right? Like they point to the things that are on the screen. I, I yeah. I'm just, I'm just dancing. thinking. You got 17 years of dance experience. He's got at least like two. <laughs> <laughs> you did not it. see me back in the club. Okay. <laughs> no. So TikTok is your least favorite. That's really interesting. I, I think 
you know, so much attention is getting pointed to TikTok as the, the, the next best place, I guess. Um, yeah. Or the you untapped know, market, right? I, and I do believe that. I do believe that that's the case. It's it's one of the, it's a mindset block for me, right? It's like, I don't feel like I'm um, witty enough or funny enough or creative enough or something to be on this platform. I'm not sure. I'm sure there's a lot to unpack there. But um, I think for me, to, what I've learned about TikTok is that you really have to figure out what your corner of the market is and what your unique angle is within that corner. So as a brand and marketing strategist, what is my like unique corner that I can grasp onto and allow people to either connect or disagree or whatever may be the case on, on the TikTok platform. And, and also it is just another space for us to need to create content and my time is limited. So, you know, we have to pick where we can show up in the best way, connect to our audience in the best way. And for us, that has been Instagram and Facebook. So that's where we hang out the most. Yeah. And got uh, your TikTok all set up for you. You're going to be the indie, indie influencer. I love it. It's great. Just focus on the music aspect of it. It's, it's there. Yeah. Have you heard, Steph, of these two awesome uh, things that are on Instagram Reel right now? There's this thing called Psycho Rock with the Doc, and there's this thing called PT with JB. And if you happen to check out Instagram, and if you're looking, you can see our handles right on the screen, you get those two wonderful pieces of content weekly, sometimes daily. Little self plug. So awesome. Yeah, soon, soon to be on I'm TikTok. known for my cheap plugs. <laughs> We've been saying we're going to jump on TikTok for a year. So, you know, yeah, we're, we're, we're kind of with you on that one. And by the way, Steph, you, you hit the nail on the head for me personally. I have so much bandwidth. Even with a team, we have so much bandwidth. Where do we spend our time between Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn? Uh, yep. and, and now YouTube and the podcast. It's, you know, there are only so many places to put our time and attention. Uh and so it's not to say that TikTok should be ignored by us, just simply we haven't had a chance to expand into that because we just made the executive decision that some of these other platforms are more important for us to be spending our time in today. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. Speaking of cheap plugs and Instagrams and ways to get a hold of people, what would be the best way for our audience to become the next indie indie superstar? I love it. Uh, the best way to do that would be to connect with us on Instagram at the Weber Co. But also, you can check out our website, theweberco.com. So, two two places where we hang out. You can subscribe to our email list. There's a lot of stuff that you can do to get involved in, with our community. But Instagram and then our website are the two best places to head to from here. And of course, all that information will be in the show notes on both YouTube and the podcast, so you will be able to find it and connect. And of course. Steph is part of the Entrepreneur Mastery Lab, where you can always reach out and ask some questions too. That's right. Steph, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for carving out some of your time. Loved having you here in the lab and loved getting some of your insight and a little bit of background about you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. It's been a, been a pleasure. Very right, Joe. Well, thanks for joining us. So who needs coffee when you have someone so fun to talk to? Right. Very good energy. Yeah. And I feel like every few minutes I learn more about Steph that she didn't bring up up front. So there's some, some layers there. To her. She's, she's got some depth to her, which is always kind of nice when you meet somebody and you're like, oh, there's more, there's more here than, than, you know, was originally introduced, which it's typical with people, right? You know, you tend to get that with people. And I'm just waiting for the indie, indie influencer to take over the world. And you're laughing now, but it's going to be huge. And can we say we were like a small part of that, like a teensy, tiny, teeny little bit, 45 oh. minute podcast part of that? I'm going to brag about it like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> we knew her when, we knew them when. Uh, so what were your top takeaways, Doc? Uh, just again, some of the stuff that we talked about. Um, I love when it always comes back to the mindset and the creation idea. And we heard a lot of that, like finding the balance and uh, it's great to hear someone even in her world where, you know, branding and influencing and that's a constant thing you have to do out there and to understand that you still have to have some sort of balance around that to keep yourself going is great. So I know it wasn't the main thing, but for me, that's one of the things that always sticks out. Well, and it doesn't, it doesn't need to be a main thing, right? I, I'm going to, I'm going to dive into, I think something maybe you mentioned that, that stood out to me. Um, but it's it's very much aligned with with what Steph was saying. Uh, we talked about hustling, 
and the and the hustle mindset and and kind of changing that. And I think that's really important because I think the hustle mindset tends to minimize human connection, right? So hustle 265 instead of 365, we minimize the human connection when we're trying to hustle, we kind of turn people into units, uh, sales, numbers, right? However you want to call it. Uh, and when we lose that connection, we lose our ability to really serve and do a good job and stand out. And it, it probably destroys a business when, when you're unable to carry that connection. Uh, and, and there is a, I'm going to use the word balance here with that, right? We can't just spend all of our time with one person. It's impossible to run most businesses that way. Uh, but we do need to find ways to manage to constantly looking to grow along with how are we developing the human connection? How are we uh, creating the content, the collaboration, the conversations to maintain that connection? So we really thought that was very powerful. Uh, it, and that was really the interplay between both you and Steph, not just something she said. So I appreciate the the conversation that that led to it. It's interesting. Our Both of our takeaways were very linked, um, even though it wasn't the main message of the um, you know, the episode, but I think it was, it's a powerful one. And that's, what's so great about this. The show is that we get to dive a little deeper into, to our guest's mind and, um, take away some things that aren't just on the top. Yeah. Well, it was, it was fun. So, Hey, you know, I said it earlier, I'm going to say it again, man, I'm going to say it. I, I'm going to keep saying it until it gets done. If you're a listener and you've been watching us or viewing us and you haven't given us a five-star review yet, go ahead and do that, please. We very much appreciate it. Like, subscribe, follow. If you're a new listener, we hope you got some real insight out of this. You enjoyed the conversation and don't forget, you can reach out to us within the EML, the Entrepreneur Mastery Lab. You can find us on all social media, except for TikTok. If you listen to us, we're just not quite there yet. Uh, at JB and the doctor, we've got our own Instagrams. Of course, you're welcome to reach out to us. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see them. Uh, you can catch us on our blog, gosh, on YouTube, on the podcast here, pretty much all over. You can find us and you can find Steph too. So the Weber Co uh, within the EML and of course on all of her Instagram and her social media links. So you have a lot of finding things to do and a lot of clicking ahead. Very of you. easy finding and very little clicking one, less than one click to do it all. I promise. I like multiple clicks. Click away. Click like crazy. Just start clicking. And then slide into our DMs. Don't, what are you telling people? Slide into our, you're going to have some sketchy DMs going on, brother. <laughs> Somebody's going to see that dance move that you pulled and they're going to slide right into your DMs. You're welcome. You're welcome sweet just keep them out of mind <laughs> all right and uh if you didn't know you know this 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 really uh, hit close to home you know steph talked about uh her parents business failing well so much of what we do is built around uh helping make sure that entrepreneurs businesses don't fail because so many do it's something like 70 percent uh so if you haven't yet check out our freebie six methods to make sure it's you don't fail and uh, normally we pull this up in a, there we go. It's right on the screen if you're watching YouTube. Uh, it's a free gift from us to you. You can get it on our website. Just go to jbandthedoctor.com. Boom, want a free gift and go grab it. And speaking of, you know, she mentioned her her father's business as a tool business. This is a great way how JB could have helped that business because you need a giant tool to promote a tool business. And we would have wow. to have a Wow, come coming at me hard to edit I had to podcast. finish strong. We had to finish strong. Dude, hey, you know what? Everybody do me a favor. Slide into this dude's DMs and let him know if you appreciated that or you didn't appreciate it. You know, and you appreciate um, it. Yeah, classic. yeah, you know, they bust his balls for me a little bit, huh? Please. <laughs> I'm JB. Yeah, I'm apparently a giant tool and I'm out. <laughs> I'm the doctor and I work with the giant tool. Peace out, yo.